the the does not like bacon. I love bacon. However, a few years back, we ceased to eat pork. And then we were stuck with turkey bacon. The solution is to make our own beef bacon. And so today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share with you a wonderful beef bacon recipe. And we're gonna to talk, to start with, talk about the meat that we use. So for beef, we are going to use brisket. This is actually smaller brisket from a smaller cow. You can do this with very large. We have done this with very large briskets. This is cut up into pieces and it is untrimmed. We want to retain the fat because the fat will help with the flavor and everything that we want to do in the development of this meat. So for our ingredients, this is a selection of the ingredients that we're going to be looking at. Um, I'm going to start with six cups of water in a bowl that I can mix everything in with. I have one cup of salt. This is uh, basically just a table salt, a kosher table salt. I have one cup of brown sugar. I have one cup of white sugar. This is a cane sugar that we use, but you can use just regular white. I'm going to put in three bay leaves, and personally I like my bacon extra peppery. You would want one tablespoon of black pepper. However, I've probably got a tablespoon and a half here because that is my preference, a little more pepper. And we're going to mix this all together. But the magic ingredient that we need to have is pink curing salt. This would be called a Prague number one uh, or something. You can get this on Amazon. We have a fairly large container here that can be used many times. I need two teaspoons of pink curing salt. And all of this needs to be mixed thoroughly until the salt and the sugar and everything has dissolved. Then I will add three bay leaves and uh, that completes our brine. What I will do now is I will place the briskets into a two gallon or two and a half gallon Ziploc bag. And those will stay inside of a, a pan of this sort to keep it from uh, accidentally um, spilling. And my brine will be put into that same bag. Let's see if I can do this without making a mess. This bag, what I want to do is I want to try to get most of the air out. And I'm going to zip it closed. And we will now put this into the refrigerator for a week, seven or eight days. So here we go. So it goes into the refrigerator for a week. Oh, 
And remember to turn it about every day or day and a half to make sure everything stays well marinated. After the bacon has been in the refrigerator for about a week, seven, to seven or eight days, and you've turned it every other day, you're gonna take it out and drain it and prepare for the next step. Let's go. Your briskets should now have a firm consistency. Uh, we see this here, a nice firm consistency. And so what you will do is mix brown sugar and black pepper. And we're going to just toss these and then pat them down with our uh, brisket and rub it down real well. Now it's time to take the briskets to the smoker. While my charcoal is getting warmed up, I have gone and gotten a pan of water that I will place inside the smoker in order to make sure that we keep a moist smoke. And so let's flip this. Take a look as we get going. Got the charcoal going. This is just gonna be a traditional smoker. Um, nothing nothing fancy i will be using some pellets and a little pellet container and water to keep the moist uh, moistness inside the smoker smoke's still going as windy as it has been today we've been able to keep this keep this going temperature down a little bit right now but i'll give you a peek at where we're headed oh yeah we got a little bit more to do here I had to move some fire inside of the box to keep the temperature up and uh, I just did some doctoring on it which brought the temperature down but that'll give you an idea actually running two different boxes of fire right now in small amounts but uh, with a uh, with a pellet burner or something with a control burn this would be very very easy to do So time has come to take these off of the grill and we are going to take them inside and put them into, or we'll wrap them and put them into the refrigerator where they will be chilled, may even put them for a short period of time in the freezer to bring the temperature uh, way down and tomorrow we will slice them. Look at that, that is just amazing. That is beef bacon in the raw. Now for this last part of the video, we are going to slice the bacon and prepare it for storage. Now I have taken the bacon out of the refrigerator. I did so earlier this morning and I put it into the freezer for a little while to get it a little chilled, a little more chilled, but not completely frozen than what it was in the refrigerator. Typical refrigerator temperature is around 37 degrees. Uh, the point that I wanted was to have it closer to 33 or even 32 degrees. So this is what we're going to begin working with as we get ready to slice. Obviously a great deal of care must be taken. One of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the grain of the meat. I'm still learning the, the perfection for this, but in this particular one it appears to me that the grain on the meat runs... Um, this direction and so I want to try to cut it a little bit more on a bias so that it's not exactly along the grain of the meat.
and I love the end pieces that have an amazing extra amount of flavor. Sometimes they wind up a little thick cut, but those can also easily be used in uh, beans or pots, recipes of that sort um, that wind up bringing lots of extra flavor. Uh, all these little trimmings and pieces as well, that can be saved in a different spot and used for um, for other dishes uh, or fried for garnish or whatever. So from this brisket that, uh, that we had that was maybe about a three and a half or four pound brisket, I, I failed to measure it exactly, we have all of this bacon. Now we're going to stack it and prepare it for freezing. I will lay it out on wax paper and just put it close together. I will not uh, overlap pieces, however that probably can be done. Um, but this way we can pull just a couple slices instead of having to thaw the entire batch. And I will lay wax paper in between each layer. That layer has two, four, six, eight, ten slices of bacon. So each layer is almost the equivalent of what you would get in the grocery store in a single pack of bacon. So at the end of the day, not only is this cheaper, it's also healthier than pork and a fantastic homegrown alternative. So I'm getting about 10 slices per stack. We'll look when we get finished and see how many slices we got total out of this. I have to tell you, this smells absolutely amazing. And that, friends, is about uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 150 or 170 slices of bacon from a medium-sized brisket that was cut into three large pieces, brined, and then uh, smoked, chilled, and sliced. Amazing, amazing beef bacon. Uh, you can make it yourself highly recommended, cheaper, much cheaper than beef, even cheaper than pork, better flavor, and I know what's in it. I know where the, in, in our case, we raise our own beef, I know where the beef came from. So, I highly recommend that you take a shot at this. This is good stuff, all right? So for King and Kingdom, I bid you shalom. Yeah, I